Today, let's go ahead and talk about some of the different camera movements that you might utilize to make your videos a little bit more interesting and engaging. And let me stress here at the beginning that you learn all these things and you put them into practice and through a bunch of trial and error, that's where you're really going to find out how these camera movements might really work out for you. All right, so um, it's all about practice and gaining steady camera control and figuring out exactly what your intentions are and how you might utilize camera movement to help you achieve those results. So let's start out with some of the basics here. Um, here are some of the foundational camera movements that you've probably already heard of and probably already been putting into practice, um, but we might as well identify and define a little bit. Okay, so the two easiest, or maybe the most common that we hear of, are pan and tilt. Pan and tilt are movements that the camera makes when it's still in a fixed position on, say, a tripod. Right? So you're fixed on a tripod, but you're going to turn the camera to show things to the left and to the right. That's panning. Now, it turns out that a lot of times, you know, maybe amateur filmmakers or certain people just mix up some of the terminology and we wind up using the term panning for any sort of camera movement and that's not technically accurate panning is very specifically moving from left to right right to left just moving horizontally right and tilt is that vertical movement so you're still in a fixed position on a tripod and you're moving the camera so it's angled downward or upward and some motion in between right so that's the difference between panning and tilt. A roll is another fixed position, but you're going to be able to sort of roll the camera from the left to the right as opposed to turning it, right? Um, so there's a difference there, and it might achieve really drastically different sort of effects. I can think of some films that Martin Scorsese has made that use the roll. Um, it's a little bit more challenging to accomplish, especially with a tripod or particular kinds of tripods, because that sort of rolling motion is just a little bit harder to smoothly accomplish, um, but can still be really effective. Now let's talk about actually physically moving the camera as opposed to its fixed position, right? So the dolly is when you're gonna either be pushing the camera forward or backward towards or away from your subject or subject matter, okay? The dolly is used to bring you into or bring you out of some sort of situation. Uh, the truck is when you're moving the whole physical camera setup to the left or to the right. As opposed to being fixed in one position, you're actually moving the whole camera setup. And pedestal is when you're lifting the actual camera up or pushing it down. So it might be on, in a fixed position on the floor, but the whole camera is being raised or lowered. Um, and that's, uh, uh, again, one of those things that's a little bit harder to achieve using uh, a traditional tripod. So we wind up talking about the pedestal movement, but we're using uh, a tool such as a crane or a gimbal or something like that. Okay, so those are some of your most basic things. Now let's talk about some of the other functionality that a camera has that can give us the sense of movement, right? And zooming is one of those things. It's relatively easy to accomplish. It still feels like the camera is moving. There's no physical movement. Really where the movement is occurring is through the lens on the camera, right? So you're adjusting the zoom either manually or using like a servo zoom function with the two T and W buttons. And it's allowing you to sort of choose the pace in which you get closer or pull away from your subject matter. Sometimes people tend to think that zoom and dolly, they've got to be the same, right? Because there's this like moving towards or away from the subject. It's actually perceived as very different. So a dolly movement is actually going to bring the audience closer, physically closer. Whereas the zoom, the audience can feel, can perceive the difference. It's more like we're creeping in on as opposed to moving towards. So it's almost like we're, we're adjusting a microscope and we're allowing ourselves to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. We're not physically moving. We're just looking a little bit deeper, right? And same thing when you're moving away from it. It's not like you're physically moving away from it. It's just like your perception or, uh, of like your connectedness to the subject is being withdrawn a little bit. So that's the way that I like to define the difference between a zoom and a physical movement of the camera. 
A Zolly or the Dolly Zoom is a combination of the physical movement and the, 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 the lens movement, right? Um, now, you've seen this a thousand times, though you may not have known it. It was uh, originally coined by uh, Alfred Hitchcock in the movie Vertigo. And it's uh, usually used in these moments in horror movies or like I've got here on Breaking Bad when there's these intense moments of like personal mental recognition of something, right? In Vertigo, it was used to illustrate um, the, the main character's fear of heights, right? Um, and then it's been utilized and, and sort of like given its own sort of, uh, sort of definition since then. Um, but you see this all the time and the way it's accomplished is by either moving towards an object and zooming out while you move or walking away from the subject with the camera and zooming in. So you've got this sort of change in perspective, but the, the subject matter stays the same size and uh, what feels like the same distance away from the camera. So there's these like unique combination of movements, both physical and lens movement that's happening that achieve this desired effect. So again, this is one of those things that's going to take so much time and practice to, to nail perfectly. Uh, multiple takes when you're working on a video if you want to achieve this. And creativity and how are we actually going to move this camera because sometimes you might be, find yourself in a situation where you don't actually have a, a camera set up that's easily movable, right? So you got to find creative ways to hold the camera steady and move yourself around so then you can work on the zooming function while you're being pushed on a rolling chair or um, like an actual like a pallet dolly mover or something like that. So anyway, there's these interesting ways that we need to experiment with to achieve this result. And also uh, another camera movement uh, that is really more of like an internal camera mechanism than it is a physical movement of the camera is the focus rack or the focus pull. So this is giving us, uh, what we do is we set ourselves up with, uh, we dial in a certain amount of depth of field and then we're able to focus on one subject that's say close to us and then we can change the focus to, to, to really hone in on something that is a different distance away from us. And that, that depth of field is going to allow us to feel the shift, to feel the movement from, from being focused on one thing that's closer to then switching to being focused on something that's further away. And just like any other camera movement, this is going to give us an opportunity to, without having to, uh, to physically move the camera, we can reveal things, plot points, character development or something, just by adjusting our focus and having that depth of field there to play with. Uh, so there's a bunch of different information about camera movements. I hope that you utilize all of these in interesting and creative ways. When you're shooting videos, make sure that you take a, take a shot idea and you apply different camera movements to it. So in the editing phase, you give yourself lots of options and uh, you don't wind up having a whole bunch of very, very similar camera movements in your shots. Use a variety of these things to really enhance your videos.